Hi everyone, it is April from Getting Her Go With It. Today, I'm here to share with you reading recommendations based on requests that you guys sent in. This is part two, let's get into it. So if you didn't see part one, you can go and watch that after you finish watching this video. I had so many requests from you guys on Instagram, on um, YouTube, and then my Patreon. Lots and lots of requests um, for the next book that you should read. Um, so I've got part one already done. It will be linked in the description box below for you. But now we're into part two too and I'm very excited to recommend some wonderful books for you. So the next request was by Maddie and she said if Anne of Green Gables was a horror or thriller book and I've got that for you. Uh, this popped up in my head pretty early when I was thinking about this question um, and I would recommend to you Florence and Giles by John Harding. This follows a brother and a sister, Florence, and Giles and they live with their uncle in a very big home and their uncle has essentially banished reading but Florence as a very bookish character unlike Anne um, decides to hoard these books and she brings them to a certain location like it's like this tower she brings them to a tower and she sits during, there during the day and reads um, now they are taken care of by governesses. Um, their latest governess, I believe has died and they have a new teacher, maybe a Mrs. Stacy. I don't, I don't know. Um, she comes in and Florence doesn't trust her and Florence feels like there's something wrong with this teacher. She doesn't seem to eat. There are lots of mysterious things surrounding this teacher and Florence needs to get to the bottom of it. And Giles is kind of along for the ride. So definitely pick up Florence and Giles if you haven't read it already. So Mesa wrote that she wanted a cozy book about a close knit family from a small town where there isn't a secret event that drives them apart. And she wrote, P.S. I already read Little Women because yes, that would absolutely be the first pick in my mind. But um, another pick uh, would certainly be The Finches from To Kill a Mockingbird. So in this book, we follow Scout and her brother and her father, who is a lawyer who is representing a black man who has been um, wrongfully accused of raping a white woman and he's defending him and it is their experience in this small town and yes there are big events that happen in here but their family core remains very strong and Atticus her her father um, instills really great values in her and her brother and so I think I would recommend this to Next, you. Peggy asked for something in a secluded cabin. Spooky. I've got two for you. Um, no one will be surprised that I'm going to recommend The Cabin at the End of the World to you by Paul Tremblay. This all takes place in a cabin. But is it at the end of the world? You'll have to read it to find out. Um, in this book, we follow a little girl named Wen and her two dads who are inside the cabin. Um, one day she sees a man uh, coming up the drive and he starts talking to her, he seems friendly enough. Then there are several more people coming up the drive with really weird um, weapons that they've constructed themselves and they're trying to get into the cabin. Um, they're asking for help to save the world and it's it's uh about invasion home invasion and it's terrifying and it takes place in a cabin so i so recommend that um i would also recommend final girls by riley sager to you um this doesn't only take place at a cabin but the main terrifying events um 
really does in the beginning at the very least. Uh, we follow a girl who is a final girl because she is the lone survivor of a massacre at a cabin. And she, you know, has been trying to move on with her life. However, um, there is someone out there killing off final girls. Um, other girls who have experienced trauma and uh, just terrifying events and massacres. Um, and they're being killed off one by one. Now, she has a very hard time remembering all of the events that take place at this cabin. Um, she's not in a hurry to remember them, but you learn about those events as you go through the book. So I'd recommend that. So Elena wrote, she wants the theme of reinventing oneself, leaving everything behind and starting over somewhere where no one knows you. And it has to be during the fall season, of course. So I've got one that I think takes place in the fall and one that doesn't. <laughs> so um, I haven't read either of them. Uh, the first is All These Beautiful Strangers by Elizabeth Klepov. I could be saying that name wrong. This follows uh, a young girl named Charlie. I think she's a teenager and her mother Grace disappeared when she was very young. She was seven and her mom disappeared and it's really haunted her whole life. She is sent to a boarding school and she wants to really start fresh. And she throws herself into the world of the school and she really wants to become part of the it crowd and she makes it into this group. And they start playing this thing called the game, which is like a scavenger hunt with very high stakes. Um, that really affects her. And the game affects her as well as the secrets from her past in a major way. So it takes place during school. So I'm assuming that's the fall. So there's all these beautiful strangers. And then I also would recommend Chocolat. Um, this is about a mother and daughter who move around um, in France based on when the wind tells them to. And she and her daughter um, set up a little chocolate shop in this very small town that don't really love that they're there. They're very strict. Um, I think they're very religious and they just don't have any space and any room in their lives for indulgence like chocolate. Um, but you come to find out that I think many of the um, people who live there really do love chocolate and love these um, this family. Uh, but they're reinventing themselves in this new place. So there's that. Next, Sarah asked for um, an eerie and or paranormal book that takes place near a body of water. I have two recommendations, one I've read, one I haven't read. The first is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. This is about a lawyer, essentially, who goes to the estate of a woman who's recently passed away. He goes to Eel Marsh House. It's huge. Um, she was quite wealthy, I think. Um, but it's very secluded and everyone in the town is kind of nervous for him that he's going to spend a lot of time there alone. Um, and they're nervous for good reason because the house is haunted um, by a woman in black. And this house is by Marshes. Very creepy, of course, paranormal. Next is Daughters of the Lake by Wendy Webb. Um, this is about a woman who's going through a divorce and she, she decides she just needs space to think and be alone. And so she goes to, I think, her childhood home, which is on Lake Superior. Unfortunately, when she gets there, she discovers the body of a woman um, floating in the lake. And this woman is holding a dead baby as well. Um, and no one can identify this woman except our main character who has seen this woman in her dreams. Is it a ghost? I, I don't know. It sounds very creepy though. It sounds wonderful. So there's that. Next is a request from Mackenzie. She said she wants a book all about girl power and women helping women. And so I have three for you here. The first is Big Little Lies 
by Leanne Moriarty. This is about a group of women um, who are all moms. Um, they have kids in kindergarten together. Now, one night at an event for their kids' um, school, uh, someone is killed. And all of these women are involved in one way or another. And you find out over the course of the book who is killed and why. But this is really about these women coming together and supporting each other, slowly revealing the truths of their lives to one another um, and lifting each other up. And I I really think this is about women empowering women. Um, next, I would recommend The Invention of Wings by Sue Monk Kidd. This is about um, two girls, Hetty um, and Sarah. So Sarah is white and Hetty is black. Um, and Sarah, I think on her 11th birthday, receives a slave named Hetty as a birthday gift, which is disgusting and very strange and just obviously wrong. Um, now, Sarah grows up to become an abolitionist and also um, a suffragette. A suffragette? 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 Oh my gosh. This, why can't I say that word? In any case, these women become really close. They stay together through their lives and they raise each other up. And it is about them getting into the women's movement together. And I really enjoyed this book. And I do think this is about women's empowerment and women supporting women. Another book that's really about women supporting women is The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. Um, this is based on the um, traveling library system that Eleanor Roosevelt helped to set up in the South. And we follow a group of women who decide that they want to be librarians and they go from home to home in the South to deliver books to people who don't read a lot. And it's about their relationship with the people they deliver books to and ultimately it's the relationship with one another and they really you know boost each other up they come across a lot of men essentially trying to quell their power and a lot of men don't like the idea of women doing this work and they they just don't have time for that i really really liked this book and I think it's a really good example of women supporting women. Okay, and Angie said that she would love something that sucks her in right from the beginning, fast paced, not a lot of history or setup. Uh, she said that she's been enjoying a lot of thrillers lately, but nothing too intense. She didn't like sharp objects. It was too much for her, which I can understand. Like that is gritty to the max. Um, so I have two recommendations that are not gritty to the max, but are thrillery or mystery that will have you flipping the pages um, and they're a little more character based so you're going to get really sucked into the characters. The first is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. <clears throat> this is about a woman who's a bit of a homebody. She She's more than a homebody. She is slightly terrified to leave her home and she only does that in like dire circumstances. Now, what she does during the day is probably drink too much and she spies on the neighbors and watches old films like black and white films that by the end of reading this, I wanted to go back and watch all of the films that she had watched. Um, one day while she's spying on the neighbors, she sees something happening in, um, in a, a neighbor's home and it looks really bad. It looks um, very violent and she gets involved. I think she calls the police, but she gets involved for the long haul and starts butting into their business. Um, but she's also an unreliable narrator. So did she see something? Did she not see something? What is going on? I really liked it. It, it is a chunky thriller. 
it is nearly it is over 400 pages but I I didn't care I I loved every second of reading that and then a book that's a bit more mystery than thriller but I think you might like as well is The Night Visitor. This has one of my favorite characters of all time. This follows two women who work on a biography together. Um, one of the women, uh, Olivia, is a professor. She has decided to write about a, uh, a scientist, uh, a female scientist. I can't remember what time. Oh, the Victoria Aaron. Era. She's a female surgeon. In any case, she asks for the help of Vivian Tester because Vivian has access to like diaries and all of this stuff surrounding this surgeon. So they, they really work on this book together. But something happens and Olivia at the book launch has a not given Vivian any recognition for the book and B is scanning the room absolutely terrified that Vivian is going to show up uh, because Vivian is an interesting character. Uh, nothing super bloody happens in this book um, but it is very mysterious and I needed to know what happened and I've been um, you know, picking, slowly picking up um, all of Lucy Atkins books because I loved this so much. So I hope you'll like it too. And then Kara asked for a bit of a sad book. She said, I'm in the mood for historical fiction that will make me cry. I've already read The Nightingale and Lilac Girls, if that helps. I've been on a roll with historical fiction lately and I want to continue it while I'm having success. I don't have any specific trope requirements, but I'll just say I don't have triggers. The sadder and more devastating, the better. And I don't think you could get sadder or more devastating than Hamnet and Judith by Maggie O'Farrell. Maggie O'Farrell just won the women's prize for this book and for good reason. This is really sad. I'm, I have to move my foot because it's completely pins and needles. <laughs> so this is about Shakespeare and his wife Agnes. We're specifically following Agnes um, and right from the get-go you know that their son Hamnet dies and it is about what happens before his death. It's about Agnes and Shakespeare falling in love and having these children. And then it's also about how they grieve after Hamnet dies. And I didn't think I was going to cry. Like I got pretty close to the end and I hadn't cried yet. And then I read the end, the end pages, and I've bawled for a long time. <laughs> like I was glad that I was alone in my bedroom bawling because it was one of those things where like you're not even reading anymore and you're just like can't stop ugly cry crying. So I would recommend this for that. Absolutely. Okay, so I think I have two more questions to go through. Um, next is from Madison. She said that she wants a locked room or isolated mystery. I've read the, um, I read and then there were none and then recently read the guest list. So I won't recommend either of those to you. I am going to recommend three books to you. One I've read, two I haven't but are very much on my radar. The first I just finished very recently, The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. This is, um, oh, it, it, it's got three different perspectives, but essentially we're following Libby who recently found out that she was given a very huge home in New York, I think. No, in London. In London. Um, and she's essentially become a millionaire at the age of 25. And she goes back to the home, but this home is full of secrets and her family history is full of secrets. Um, her parents were found dead in the home 
um, they had done this like suicide, like this joint suicide thing. Um, and they left her upstairs in her crib at the age of 10 months. And when the cops get there, I mean, she's alive and well and happy, um, but they're dead. Uh, and she gets this house. But we also follow um, one of her, her two siblings uh, who had grown up in this house and they were quite a bit older than her. And you see what happened in this house. The people who moved into this house, who basically started a cult in this home and you feel really isolated, you feel trapped um, because these characters are totally trapped and can't get out. <clears throat> And the rules get stricter and stricter like there's suddenly locks on the doors that like they can't they can't get out physically they're suddenly not allowed to wear shoes anymore and it's claustrophobic it's claustrophobic and i would so highly recommend that for that prompt um i'd also recommend what lies between us by john mars this is about two women um, one of the women shackles the other at night because of something that she's done to her. Um, and so it literally is about being in a, a prisoner in your own home, which is terrifying. And then another isolated mystery book that I would recommend to you is um, Death in the Family by Tessa Wegert. Um, I have this coming to me right now and I'm so excited. Um, this is about a family who have a lot of secrets and people die at this family estate. And we follow a detective who's trying to solve these murders and what happened there. And it's part of a series. This is the first in series. I think it came out in August and it just sounds absolutely wonderful. Abby from Crime by the Book loved it. And so that's why I want to read it and maybe you'll enjoy it too. Okay, last but not least is from Debbie. She said, I love historical fiction. I'm interested in Norse historical fiction. I've read Burial Rites by Hannah Kent and it was set in Iceland and loved it. I would also like ideas on historical fiction set in Canada and Australia. Now, unfortunately, I think Burial Rites is the only book that I have read like in Iceland. I don't think I've read any other historical fiction set in Iceland, sadly. Um, but you, thank God you also said that you're interested in Australia and Canada uh, because I've got you with those. Um, so the first that I want to recommend to you is take takes place, I should say, in Australia, I think in the 1930s, 1920s. It's called The Light Between Oceans. It's one of my favorite books of all time. This follows a couple who are going through infertility and miscarriage, and they um, take care of a lighthouse on an island named Janice Rock off the coast of Australia. Now, one day, uh, a little boat comes to shore and in it is a dead man and a baby that is very much alive. And they keep the baby and there's a lot of repercussions for keeping the baby. But this was the first time that I felt really known about infertility. But also you really feel the setting of Australia and the waves and the sand and like the isolation as well. It, it's very atmospheric to me. So I think this is a good one for you for that. The next book that I recommend to you uh, takes place in Canada. This is Clara Callan by Richard Wright. I should say in part takes place in Canada because we follow two sisters. One of them is a school teacher um, in a small town in Ontario. The other is uh, a radio soap star in New York. Um, this takes place in the 30s and it's about their relationships with one another, their letters going back and forth, the expectations that women face at this time. 
I read this when I moved to Toronto and I felt very isolated in Toronto and missed my sister desperately. Um, and this kind of, I don't know, it, it helped me a little bit. So I think I'll always have this on my shelves and I'd like to reread it actually, because it's been a few years since I read it, but I really liked it. And, um, it also won the Giller. So, which is a Canadian award. So hooray for Clara Callan. So those are all of the many, many recommendations I have for you. If you haven't watched part one, I will link that in the description box below. I hope you guys are doing really, really well, and I will talk with you soon. Bye!